All right, Bolt Beaters, this is Paul Milan here, We're writing for BoltBeat.com. We're here with San Diego Chargers' third-round draft pick of the 2011 draft, Sharice Wright. Sharice, how's it going, buddy? It's going good. It's going real good. So anything new since the draft, ever since you uh, picked a uh, third round from the San Diego Chargers, what, what's the first thing that runs through your head at that point in time? Uh, at that point in time, I mean, I'm happy and I'm thankful. And uh, so it was a dream come true, um, being drafted by the team that, that I've been wanting to play for. You know, for for a while now, and I'm, I was just happy and excited that they that they trusted in me and they drafted me. So it was one of the greatest feelings I ever felt. Yeah, definitely, man. So so coming into the draft, I mean, I know San Diego Chargers has been a you're, you're from Southern Cal. I mean, you you're you're there all the way from elementary school all the way through college. Finish your collegiate career at USC. You know, stand out. Right. Were you looking? What did you have any connection to San Diego? Did you have anything in your mind saying, okay, maybe the Chargers might take me? Uh, not at all. I mean, I met with him one time at the at the combine uh, for a former interview, and uh, and that was it. And I told him that uh, they they told me they would draft me. I would stop doing all my interviews at that point. You know, they didn't tell me that, but uh, I continued on my interviews, and I didn't speak to them after that. You know, so I didn't really think that they were going to draft me. I mean, they didn't they didn't contact me all, at all. I didn't visit them. They never called me. They never called for a draft day number or anything. So I really didn't think they, they were going to draft me. So to see that 858 number was, you know, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, so I, and we've all seen that YouTube video. All of us followers were, I mean, we're, we're diehard. We're looking up all, all through the... The, the the two four video stream on YouTube and we've all seen that one famous video. It's it's the reaction video when you got that call from San Diego and and I mean you can just see the excitement coming out of your body and, and your family's all excited. Everybody's pumped up. What does that mean for you and your family uh, to get that call? Uh, it means a lot. You know, it's life changing for for me and my family and uh, and my family was rooting for San Diego. They're asking every week. You know, as we talk to San Diego, as we talk to San Diego. I mean, they they didn't want me to leave California either. You know, so it was big for them for me to actually go to the team that they've been rooting for and, and want me to go there. So it, it was exciting. It was so exciting. I mean, like you said, that video that video tells it all. Let's dip back just a little bit. So coming from your Cali roots. Um, talk about your upbringing in combination with school and sports. I know all the way from uh, you know from middle school. I know you had to be active with the football. How was your family supporting you? Maybe just uh, talk about your combination between the two. Um, yeah, it was. I mean, I started off you know um, playing football in San Bernardino and Junior American, and then I moved to Colin when I was in the third grade, and I played Junior American there. While uh, I met my ex teammate Alan Bradford, and we played together in Junior American, and. Uh, I went on to Colton High School, and my family was there. Uh, my sister was, like, my biggest supporter, you know, uh, in high school. She was at every game, no matter where it was at. We actually went to San Diego when I was in high school and played the San Diego team. And uh, so, that I mean, I got to go there, go to San Diego for the first time in high school and play football there. And then, uh, you know, I took my career on the USC, you know, to, to stay close to my family and be with the best team that, at the time, you know, and, uh, and, you know, and then I got that call from San Diego and took me to the NFL, you know, and stayed in Cali. And my family was real supportive of me, and, you know, they couldn't be more excited, you know. And, like, that I have plans on having, you know, almost all my family there at the first home game, you know, to, to be there to support me. So I'm looking forward to it. Definitely, man. And we're all looking forward to seeing you dress up in that blue and gold and definitely slap on that jersey there. So, so looking at you, you said you, you definitely wanted to be at USC because, you know, it is that top-ranked school. You know, did it, did it have anything to do with the fact that, you know, UF, USC definitely does put out the most of any school to ever put out for pro athletes. Did that have any persuasion in your uh, college attendance? Oh, yeah, definitely. I knew, I knew it made my chances there. I mean, that was one of the biggest reasons. I knew Coach Carroll was. You know, he had a a, a, a pass in the NFL, and, you know, the, the coaching staff, you know, with Coach Martin, is about an NFL, ex-NFL uh, coaches and players on the coaching staff at the time. And, you know, like you said, they put out a lot of NFL players, and, you know, they have, they're getting the top athletes, you know, in the nation coming to USC. And, you know, I always wanted to be around the best. But I knew it would bring out the best in me. And, you know, I knew my, my chances of going to the NFL was greater if I went to a school like USC. And it was my backyard school, too, you know. And, you know, it was, and no, no, it was no say. I, I didn't think twice about going to USC. Once they offered me, I committed right away. So, I mean, that's just, it worked out for me. Yeah, definitely. And it definitely did work out. Nobody can say it didn't, definitely. 
So you know, right. we're looking at your career at, at USC. You know, you had you had a couple issues come up as far as you know a couple injuries. Uh, you had a suspension going on. I know you definitely used them. I know you weren't, weren't just kicking back. How did you use those in a positive way to to kind of hurdle those obstacles? Oh man, I, I I just I just you know I just I just kept faith. You know that's one thing I did do when I just I never gave up. That was, that was the biggest thing. You know I could have could have easily gave up after one incident and the next incident, but I just kept faith, and it was that important to me to to be successful and to make it to where I wanted to go. And I knew if I just if I just kept trying, I think it would work out. And uh, and it took care of itself. And I, everything that happened to me, I, mean, I thank God for it because. I mean, I learned from everything that happened, and it made me a better person, and, you know, it helped me learn. It helped me grow as a person, as a player, as a leader, as a brother, as a son, you know. So, I mean, I'm thankful for all those things that happened to me, and um, I'm moving on from it. And def- definitely, you, you're talking about growing as a person, and, and one thing that you'll notice as, as a fan, as you look into, you know, as a fan watches Sharice, right, the one thing that they will notice is, you you put off you you have this aura of this this great character guy and and that's something that we can all definitely respect and, and appreciate especially especially coming onto our team. Uh, you've done a lot of charity stuff. I've I've seen you dip back to your old elementary school. What is what is being able to give back to the community mean to you? It means a lot. I mean it means a lot just to be in this in this position that I've always dreamed about and. Uh, you know, I, I was a kid before, and I was in those same chairs, and I was in those in those kids' uh, shoes at one point in my career, in my life, and I was never never able to, to meet an NFL player or a college player or, or somebody who was doing things that I'm doing. And, you know, and that's what inspires me the most is to give those kids something I never had. You know, and I, I always wanted it. I always wished, you know, I, I had a chance to meet someone who was doing what I wanted to do or doing something good in life and just overall, you know, just doing something positive. You know, and that's that's why I reach out to these kids and I just try to give them a little bit of something that I never had in my life. You know, and, and if I think if I would have had that, it would have been, it would have inspired me a little bit more. You know, to to do what I what I'm doing, but I, but I made it to where I'm at, and you know, giving back is one thing I really take pride in. And you know, I'm a good I'm a good guy with a good heart, and I was raised well by my mom, and you know, she taught me a lot of things in life, and that, that's why I'm the way I am. Definitely, man, and and. And and when you're talking to these athletes, I was watching your Colton your Colton Elementary uh, your video when you're dipping back and and you're going through and and you're telling these kids, you know, look, I was in your same exact seat basically, you know. In other words, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but but definitely like I came from this school, this is where I was, and and I did it. So you know, don't be don't be afraid to give it your all. So what can you give if if you were to just give one sentence, one strong pump up sentence? To, to a to a young athlete who's coming up and has those dreams to be in the NFL, but somebody's telling him, you know, you don't have the chance to make it, or the the odds of you making it just aren't worth it. You know, give it up. I mean, the biggest thing is is knowing what you want to do, and 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 don't let nobody tell you you can't. You know, what I mean, that was my thing. I knew what I wanted to do, and I had to figure out how I can do it, and just you know, and fight for it, and work hard for it. You know, and hard work pays off. You know, nothing in life is easy. It feels easy. Everybody would do it, you know, but it's not, you know. And the people who, who work hard, who want to work hard, are those people who, who make it and they get to where they want to get to where, they, to where they're going. And like I always tell them, you don't even have to play football. Whether you want to be a doctor, whether you want to be whatever you want to be in life, just know what you want to be. That's the biggest thing. And, and, and work for that and do everything you can to achieve it. Definitely. And, and we're talking about working over these hurdles and stuff. So, so. As you're coming from college, whether it was from high school to college or college to pro, what's been the biggest hurdle that Sharice Wright has had to overcome so far? Um, the biggest hurdle, uh, the biggest hurdle I would have to say was uh, was when I was academically ineligible. You know, I, I didn't fail no classes, but I, I dropped down a little bit, and, and I was I was a half the grade away from making grades, and and that was the biggest thing, you know, and that was just overcoming that and making grades the, the following semester. And, and making that that first start of the of the of the season, you know, in, in the bowl game and getting my first interception, to, you know, leading up to this past season. I mean, that that was the biggest the biggest obstacle that I had to overcome because I had to I had to stick in school and I had to look myself in the mirror and say, you know, I, I messed up and it was embarrassing for me and for my family, but I overcame it, you know, and um, you know, so it's been great. And overcome you definitely did, man. Uh, we we know you're a high character guy. We know you've definitely put this this extreme passion into into what you're doing. And you know you you popped up the grades. You got you got academically eligible. You worked through the injuries. 
you know, when you were on the field, you were definitely effective. You were definitely played with some heart. You know, there's highlight reels up, up the yin yang on you. I mean, as as a as a person, we know exactly that you're this high character dude. And you know, what what would you say would be the three terms that we could describe you as a San Diego Charger coming in next year? What are the three terms that would best describe you as a player? As a player, yeah. Um, um, passionate, um, hard work, hard working, and physical. Definitely. And physical, I mean, I, I've, I've watched you just <laughs> drop your head and lay some people. And, and the, the famous one is the Jake Locker hit. Do you have any words on the Jake Locker hit? Oh, man. Um, man, I, oh, man. I don't even mean Jake Locker. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. We had, we had our battles, man. We had our battles, man. You know, and I, I got the best of them, I would say. I would say I got the best of Jake Locker, you know, and he got the best of me, I should say, on the other hand. And, um, I mean, it's just great football. You, just, you love it. You know, you love when you can, can attack a quarterback like that. And, you know, he's a tough guy, you know, and um, it, it was good. Definitely, and to see to see a tough guy coming at you like that and for you to just, I mean, you basically, you almost made it upright. You you ended up falling over him, but you almost stood upright as you took as you laid that hit. So that, that's a cool uh, one, man. We love watching that, especially as Chargers fans, man. That yeah. just pumps us up to see what we can have in the future for sure. Yeah, yeah I was just thinking either it was going to be me or it was going to be him, you know, that, that, that took the hard hit. And uh, when I was watching Sam on him, you know, the, the, that week before, he, he never ran out of bounds and he, he loved, Knowing his shoulder and uh, he was physical, and I was just like, if I have my opportunity, I'm gonna make sure that you know I'm not on the other end of that of that uh, battle, and um, and that was it, and uh, and I wasn't, so <laughs> that's good. Definitely, and and talking about opportunities, it, let's let's run through a little scenario here. So you're in the NFL, you're suited up, Chargers gear, middle of the game, you have your option of scenario, you get the sack, you get your first NFL sack. You get your first uh-huh. NFL interception, or you cause a forced fumble on a play. Which one do you take? Um, I take the interception, and I, I put points on the board. So I'll take the interception for a touchdown. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, interception. Got to got to stack that highlight reel, baby. Mm, got to. So so let's let's run through just a little. We we got to know you as a player, as a person. Let's go just a little bit, just deeper. Um, just quick, just quick questions, just. What whatever first comes to mind, we're just gonna run through some of your favorites. Just this is just Sharice right right here. So so fav- favorite color. Purple. Favorite movie. Um. Um. Man. Um. Bad Boys Two. Favorite car. Um. That's that's five fifty. How about TV show? That's baby. TV show. Uh. Rob is a fantasy factory. Musical artist. Um, Jay Z. NFL player of all time. Yeah, Sanders. Sport besides football. Uh, basketball. Travel location. Uh, Brazil. Your favorite camp drill. Uh, hitting drills. Your favorite holiday. Uh, Christmas. And your favorite way to spend the day off. The what? Your favorite way to spend a day off? Um, relaxing, relaxing with my fa- chilling with my family. Definitely, man. So, Therese, Ch- thanks so much for your time. I-, I speak for the entire Chargers fan base when I say welcome to the San Diego Chargers. We can't wait to Thank see you, you in action. I-, I love, I love the the fan support, and, and I definitely know that that fans are gonna. They're going to definitely dig on you, and they're going to love what they see when Sharif suits up and uh, gets through camp. And we, we definitely look forward to brighter days for sure. Um, as soon as this lockout lifts, you know, we definitely look forward to, to seeing a progressive camp, and, and we know you're just going to jump right in. Um, I know you definitely are digging the fan support. And man, how can, how can fans get a hold of you to, to touch base with you or show you just some love? Oh, uh, man, I, I'm trying to find me on Twitter at, uh, at Reese24 underscore 7. Um, I'm on Facebook. You can contact me on Facebook. I have my fan page and my personal page on there. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can contact me on any of those. I'm available on that. You know, and I try my best to, uh, to respond and, um, you know, and to reach out to my fans and, and people who support me. So you can contact me on those sites. 
San Diego Chargers fans, Bull Beat fans, followers, everybody get a hold of Sharice Wright, Twitter, Facebook. Thank you, Sharice, yes, for San sir. Diego Chargers uh-huh. and the Blog Beat Bolt, Bolt Beat blog site. We'd just like to say thank you again, and I appreciate your time, man. Uh, thank you, Bolt Nation.